Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, let's get started. So we have three semicircles and a circle that are inscribed in an equilateral triangle with side length 1. And we're supposed to find the radius of the circle. So we'll have two main steps. First, we're going to find the radius of the semicircles. By the way, they, the semicircles are congruent. And then, second, we're going to find the radius of the circle. All right, let's get started. Now, what am I going to do? I'll basically make some connections as always, right? So let's go ahead and connect one of the centers to one of the, one of the sides of the triangle. So this is going to be a right triangle. And what do I know? Let's call this R for now, and we can maybe call the radius of the circle something else. If this is R, I know that this is 60 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So this gives me the hypotenuse. So if the longer leg is R, as you know, the longer leg is square root of 3 times the shorter leg. So it, this one is going to be R divided by root 3, or you can write the shorter leg as R times the square root of 3 divided by 3. Therefore, the hypotenuse is going to be twice the shorter leg, which is uh, 2 root 3 over 3 multiplied by r. Okay, that's going to be my uh, length. And then let's go ahead and make another connection here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the two centers here, which will make sense, hopefully. Then what do I, uh, what am I getting from here? This is r and this is also r at the point of tangency, right? This is also a right triangle. Uh, this is a 60 degree angle. And let's go ahead and drop a perpendicular here as well. That's going to help us to, you know, let's just go ahead and drop this one. And then this is going to be 90 degree angle. And what do I know? This is going to be R, right? This is going to be a 30 degree angle. If the longer leg is R, then the shorter leg, just like the other triangle here, it's going to be R root 3 over 3. Or I can probably write it as root 3 over 3 R, right? That probably makes more sense, like this. And then this length is actually the longer leg. And the longer leg is, this is a different triangle, obviously. Uh, the longer leg is going to be square root of 3 times the shorter leg. So this is going to be square root of 3 times r. All right? So what I know is that I can find r because I know the side length for the triangle, which is 1. And from here, I can actually go ahead and calculate r. Let's go ahead and do that first. That's our first step. So what I know is basically 2 square root of 3 over 3r plus square root of 3r plus square root of, actually square root of 3r plus square root of 3 over 3r. Uh, they all add up to 1, correct? Okay. And now what I'm going to do here is going to add these two things here because uh, the, these two will add up to root 3r. And this is going to give me 2 times the square root of 3r is equal to 1. From here, r is equal to 1 over 2 root 3. And if you rationalize the denominator, you know, just multiply root 3, both the top and the bottom. This should give you square root of 3 divided by 6. So that's going to be my radius for the semicircle. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and use that, right? Use that expression to calculate the radius of the uh, circle that's in the middle. Okay, so how am I going to do that? I'm just going to write a nice equation for that one and we'll be able to calculate the radius of the circle as well. That's our step number two. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the following. Since we already know R, we can actually go ahead and erase some of this stuff. So we can kind of clean it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll kind of start fresh here. All right. So let's see. Uh, I can just go ahead and maybe use a different color here, like blue maybe. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to connect these centers and form another equilateral triangle here. As you can see, like this one and that one, and this one, okay, awesome. So now this is equilateral, as you know, and what we know about the circle is that it's actually sitting at the very center, right? So that's kind of nice because it has some symmetry to it. 
What I'd like to do here is make a very important connection. I'm going to go ahead and draw the height of this equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and drop a perpendicular right here. So let's see if we can make a good one, like this one. Okay, awesome. And then we're going to use that to evaluate, but we'll need more connections. So let's go ahead and make another connection here. As you see, connections are always important, right? So we'll connect those. And then hopefully this should help us. Let's see what we get from here. Well, first of all, we know that this is R, right? And let, why do, what, sh what should we call the radius of the circle? Let's call that X. Okay, so let this be X. And then, so this length is going to be R plus X. Cool. And then this is also R. Now, here's one thing that's super important. Obviously, it doesn't matter which side of the triangle you work because this is equilateral, so it has symmetry. Uh, so I just chose this side, doesn't really matter. But what's important is that we have the base and the hypotenuse, right? But we need to know the height of the triangle. How do I find the height of the triangle? Well, let's go ahead and consider the big picture here. Uh, this is an equilateral triangle with side length 2R. Therefore, I can find its side. So this is definitely perpendicular, right? The whole height for the equilateral is going to be what? From 30, 69, the triangle, it's going to be R root 3. So this length is supposed to be r root 3. Let me go ahead and change colors here. Maybe this one. So this is going to be r root 3. Awesome. Now, what about this part? Well, I know that this piece is r as well, and this piece is x. So that's kind of nice because the unknown length for me, which is the height for this triangle, and let me go ahead and shade that triangle so you know what I'm talking about, okay? The height for the triangle is actually determined by a difference. How? You can subtract from r root 3, right? You can subtract this piece right here, which is r plus x. So go ahead and subtract that. So this is going to give you basically the height of the triangle, which you can call h here. So this is h, okay? And what do I know? I know that Pythagorean theorem applies in that little shaded triangle. So we're going to use that next. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Let's make some room for ourselves. Because we already know the R value. Let's not erase that though, right? We're going to use it right now. Well, you probably already memorized it. It's root 3 over 6. But let's just go ahead and keep it there. So now, what I'd like to do is I want to write the Pythagorean theorem. And you know, this can be also written as R root 3 minus R minus X. Or even you can write it as, you know, r times root 3 minus 1 minus x. But what's really important is that since I know r, I can just go ahead and plug it in there. So h is going to be root 3 over 6 multiplied by root. So what we're going to do next is uh, the following. So we know the h, right? This is h. Okay, cool. So I got h. And what I need to know is, well, h squared plus r squared is going to give me the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and write that down. 8 squared plus r squared is equal to r plus x squared, right? Okay, r plus x squared. Awesome. And what do we know? We know that r is equal to root 3 over 6. Okay? And I'm supposed to solve for x. Awesome. But before we get into that, we can actually go ahead and simplify this a little bit, you know, to get rid of the r squared so we don't have to you know, deal with it anymore uh, because that's going to help. So R squared cancels out and we end up with something like this. So, so my goal is to solve for X. So I can just go ahead and write this as H squared, which is going to be root 3 over 6 times root 3 minus 1 minus X. That's going to be my H, right? I'm going to square that. And that is going to equal 2R, which is root 3 over 3, multiply by X plus x squared. And what's really interesting in that we're going to get another x squared, which is going to cancel out, so we're not going to have to deal with a um, quadratic equation here. Nice? Okay, let's proceed. Okay, that came up again. I don't need that anymore. We can go ahead and erase it. Okay, cool. We don't need that anymore. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this. Now, uh, for the first part, the radical, I just want to distribute that so it can look like this. 3 minus root 3 over 6 and I'll square that, minus 2 times that quantity, right, 
2 times that quantity, multiply by x, plus x squared is equal to root 3 over 3x plus x squared. What's really cool here is that the x squared cancels out, and we end up with something nicer. Okay, so x squared cancels out. I can go ahead and put everything that contains x on the same side, so kind of like bring this over here, square root of 3 over 3x. Now this cross cancels, so that leaves a 3 here, plus 3 minus root 3 over 3x, and then it's equal to that one. So let's go ahead and square that expression. Maybe I can do it in the next step. Okay, fine. Let's take one more step here. Now we can put these two together. Since they have a common denominator already, I can just add the numerators, but when you add the numerators, you're gonna notice that these two cancel out. That leaves us with three X over X, which is X, which is really cool because this actually gives us the value of X right away, right? Isn't that nice? I mean, we get the X right away. So X is gonna equal what? This expression here, let's go ahead and square it. It's going to be nine minus six root three, plus square root of 3 squared is 3 divided by 36. If I simplify this a little bit, it's going to look like 12 minus 6 root 3 over 36. And divide everything by 6 here, you'll get 2 minus root 3 over 6 as the radius of the circle. And that is going to be the end of this video. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.